Now, I'm also going to introduce to you someone that you probably all know anyway. He's been, he's really become somewhat of an icon here in Albuquerque. And he is going to read something that he created. And it is actually a response to someone from 1852 on the 4th of July. I won't say who it is, because I don't want to steal the thunder, so to speak. But Hakeem Bellamy, he is known as the inaugural poet laureate of Albuquerque. And without further ado, Hakeem Bellamy. Thank you. Make some noise for our fine host, our very fine host. I walked up and Richard Padrell was sick. Joseph was singing my song. Pretty Brown Eye, he's singing way better than me though. I sound good in the shower though, I promise. All right, I know what I'm doing. I've seen a mic before, hold on, hold on. There we go. Well, happy July 4th, everybody. How are you doing? Happy 4th. So that's a good, that's a good segue into what I'm gonna present because um, I, I, I was asked to write a response to Frederick Douglass' speech in 1852 in Rochester. He's then home in Rochester, New York. He lived there for 25 years before, um, I believe he died in Washington, D.C. But um, he wrote a speech in 1852 about the 4th of July, and uh, he was not nice. Because 1852, we were still going, we were still in the throes of the Civil War and, uh, and Reconstruction, and uh, he was his, his central question was, how can I celebrate independence in a country where I am not free. And so uh, it's a fabulous speech, you should check it out. The Meaning of July 4th for the Negro is what it's called. And uh, he particularly calls it July 4th and the 4th of July, he does not call it Independence Day uh, for a reason. So uh, let me share with you what I was able to come up with. This is called The Meaning of July 4th for the Negro, the remix. Written in part and in response to Frederick Douglass' speech, the meaning of the 4th of July 4th for the Negro, originally delivered in his then home of Rochester, New York, on July 5th, 1852. The fireworks still smell like gunpowder. While we still gather around the bodies of black men for blood, sport, and tears. We still pretend that this nation has ever gotten something without taking it from someone else, including freedom, and have the nerve to call it independence. The meaning of July 4th for the Negro hasn't changed. It remains a celebration of conquest, a champagne of blood flooding the picnics beneath the poplar tree right underneath our dangling feet. This holiday still feels like PTSD making a mockery of us, like, like 300 years of slavery was nothing more than a bad dream, like making the de Declaration of Independence a document of convenience is uniquely American. As if all men are created people, but black men are created lethal, and black women are a threat too because they just keep pumping out black votes. Our esteemed forefathers of brain and boast have my respect, but cannot have my right to read between the stripes and stars. White, high, white hot flashes of light. Did you ever notice that the stars look like gunfire? That our flag hangs like a civilian paper target at the shooting range, shots to the heart like 50, colors running down in bars across this country's white skin. Standing with God and the crushed and bleeding slave on this occasion, I will, in the name of humanity, which is outraged, in the name of liberty, which is fettered, in the name of the Constitution and the Bible, which are disregarded and trampled upon, dare to call in question and to denounce with all the emphasis I can command everything that serves to perpetuate the great sin and shame of America, where we still confess free liberty, we still confuse free liberty with free labor, just as we did 161 years to the day I delivered these words. Made immigration the new institutional slavery and prisons the new world plantation. As our neighbors watch, as our neighborhood watch becomes mobs of one with a gun and modern day lynchings go on trial and on TV. Still not letting us be human, only a fraction. Still not letting us be men, only boys, until we stand our ground until we are a threat, until we are probable cause, until we are self-defense, only then, 
are we more than a man? Then we are animals, brute and beast, pig, pork, and beef. The barbecue still smells like flesh, like discipline, then dinner, like no time to cry, complain, console, or celebrate poverty, like this is still a war. And stopping for a moment to mourn your dead could mean your next. There's always been a war on thugs. It's just been on the wrong ones. We never wanted the drugs or the guns, but that's extremely hard to overcome in a country whose bombs bursting in air and rockets red glare at us. And the shelling still reminds me of Sharpsburg. I still duck when I hear the American Revolution exploding above me. I still have hope that it will trickle down. I still flinch when people call this Independence Day, so I call it July 4th. I call it what it is. What to the American slave is your 4th of July, you ask? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days of the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty and unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing empty and heartless, your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of the United States at this very hour, still. Part me, part Frederick Douglass. That end part was all Frederick Douglass. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So definitely check it out. Again, it's, uh, it's the meaning of the 4th of July to the Negro. It's a, it's a pretty epic essay and speech that he gave in Rochester. And uh, I've been honored to write a response to that. So thank you very much. And this fine apron I'm modeling belongs to Virginia Hampton back there. So if you want to get in the kitchen and look good, you might want to try one of these. All right, let's give Hakeem another round of applause, please. That was awesome.